shamelessly displaying my state of mind But you walk right past me Pretending like you don't see What's yours for the taking tonight? You have no idea. I did it again. I got up this morning at four. I went to the health club again. Yes, I did. I'm so excited. Tomorrow will make a whole full week. You know, I almost said girl. You know how Um, I remember two years ago when I took a day off from going to the junior show. I was ripped for real. I mean, by day, snapped, snatched. Everything was great. I said, I'll just take a day off. That day lasted two years. I ain't doing that again. As soon as I get my body back, I'm keeping her. You hear me? So good morning, everybody. Um, oh, yeah. I'm Lauren. <laughs> I was like, what was I going to say? I'm Lauren Michaels Harris. Welcome to today's installment of Bathrobe Moments. You see, I had to put my weave on today. You know, I only do that on special occasions for special, special, special guests. And today we're having a party here at Bathrobe Moments. My guest today is Jessica Suzanne Dugas, and she is 40 years old today. That's a big one. Remember 40? Oh, I was like, I'm out of my threes. You know what I mean? And um, But man, 40s is a great decade. And boy, is she going to prove that today. Uh, let me see. Oh, before I get her in here, you guys, listen. Again, I'm just keep, I'm going to beat it till the wheels fall off. We are raising money. We're raising money. I'm not stopping until I get this done. I don't care how long it takes. We are raising $3,500. I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus. Yes, we are, we are going to raise this money to send a kid just like the one you see on the screen particularly i'm hoping for a girl because they always have it harder um in most places in the world but particularly so over in kenya where the brett weiss scholarship foundation has given away over 72 full four-year high school scholarships this means that for 3500 dollars we get to help send a kid to high school for all four years that covers everything um, transportation, their dormitory, their uniforms, their books, their tablet, everything, food. And I mean, come on, right? If we just all put in $5 a piece, we could get a kid there in no time. Um, so that's what we're trying to do. That's no, um, retract that. That is what we are going to do. Um, I don't know what it is, but I just can't let this one go. I just cannot, you know, I'll do little fundraisers and we hit what we hit and then I keep it moving. This one, has a hold on me. So I believe that there's a special, special kid that has our name all over their journey. All of us, all of us. And I'm not going to stop until I find out because you know they send you uh, an information packet. You can write and support the kid that you end up eventually sending, being responsible for sending. So we're going to do that. Ooh, Jessica, will you type into the uh, comment section your connectors? Because I forgot to get them from you. We were so busy planning your party. Uh, here's the here's the connector to make your donation. Please get over. Right now, everyone, share out this broadcast. We're going to prove to the world that there's still enough of us who care. There's still enough of us who, I'm just keeping it real with you, enough of us who give a shit. Okay? And I'm just saying, there it is. Hate me if you want to, but we're going to get this done. WhyScholarshipFoundation.org. Won't you help today? The manner in which we bless others is exactly the manner in which we will be blessed. Can I get an amen up in here? Okay, Lucy is today, yesterday she took the day off to get her roots done. Today she calls in talking about she needs to get a pedicure. So anyway, I'm just drinking out of this backward mug because it is a kitty mug, meow, but they must have thought everybody in the world was left-handed because they faced it through, I don't know. Ooh, that was a little hotter than I anticipated. 
Okay, so without further ado, y'all ready to party? Get your streamers, get your party hats and everything you can together. Put your hearts together, put your hands together and help me bring to the show the birthday girl herself, Miss 4-0 looking like 2-0, Jessica Dugas. <laughs> Good morning, Jessica. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? Awesome. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy to be here this morning. So are we. We're happy you're here. Happy birthday. Thank you. So let me just start by saying, first of all, I didn't do any of your uh, um, credentials. I didn't say anything because I wanted to wait. But first, I want to ask you, do you have any idea? Can you name one thing that happened on February 4th, 40 years ago? 40 years ago on February 4th, I, I was- Okay, I not was 40 years ago. Anything <laughs> special that happened on February 4th in history? I, I believe that February 4th is also Rosa Parks' birthday. Really? I believe so. If I'm not mistaken, I could be- I, I'm Somebody check sure. it. Pretty sure. Oh. Check, check me on that. <laughs> check that and let's find out. Um, wow. I wish uh, um, Virginia Hodges was here. She's good friends with that family. She did something for the Rosa Parks family. She would know. Uh, well, here's one thing. On, on February 4th in 1945, during the final stages of World War II, the Yalta Conference opened with Franklin D. Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, and Joseph Stalin meeting to, pl to plan the final defeat and occupation of Nazi Germany. Boy, am I glad they had that. It was one hundinger of a meeting, right? <laughs> and uh, apparently so was the one at the hospital you were born in. Because, mm. boy, they didn't know what they were bringing to us, but we're so glad you're here. Congratulations on uh, all your, your wonderful successes. Uh, you're the host of The Breakthrough Show, which is a great show. Um, we'll get into that. You, you, you have the most interesting way of describing what you do. I was I used to say I pick one or two things out because yeah, everybody does that. Yeah, everybody says they do that. But and I look for that one little golden kernel. I wrote every single one of you. Intuitive mentor, which um <coughs> excuse me, um really stood out to me because I'm listening to a book right now. It's the the guidebook or the handbook for empaths. Mm. And they were breaking down all the different types. And I didn't realize there were so many. And so intuitive. Uh, we're going to talk about that. You said inspirational entertainer. So we're going to find out what you what your take is. I always get people on this one. What the difference is between motivational and inspirational. Mm -hmm. What do you think the difference is? I think motivation comes from within. You have to motivate yourself. I think it, being inspired is what can help motivate us. That's fine. Mm. Well, I'm going to tell you, you want to hear my take on it? Sure. <laughs> motivational uh, is for me, the kind of thing where if I say to an audience, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink, drink. Everybody knows that. So I just reminded them of a motivational moment that they, they know, but inspirational is when you say something or do something to people that they go, mm, you know, I never thought about it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, now that was a good one. You know, usually it's an ism, a Jessica ism, a Lauren ism. And so, yeah, that's what I've, that's what I do in my coaching program. I tell people, you want to be inspirational because that's the thing that makes people sound go, well, what the hell is that? And now you got them <laughs> right where you want them, right? Yeah. So you're also, we want to talk today. This is interesting to me, and I really wanted you to get into this one. Mm -hmm. Healing modalities, because the moment I read that, I felt like this is something I bet you we can all possess. Healing modalities, because of the way you you phrased it, it wasn't like I was born a, a, an energy healer. No energy. So I can't wait to get in that. And then we're going to get into all your books. So tell everybody where you are in the world, Jessica, and who else is in that house with you? You live alone? <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> no, far from that. But um, I'm currently in Alabama. I grew up in Connecticut. So that's a long way from from what Alabama. I know as home. Yeah. What's in Alabama? <laughs> my, well, my husband is here and I, I met oh. him here. And oh. so, you know, you know. <laughs> so so do they think you're a Yankee? Oh, yes. Listen, I've had all kinds of comments. And it's it's really interesting here because where I grew up in Connecticut, it was a very, um, very multicultural, very, um, you know, everybody. There's my friend Kevin in the comments in Connecticut, too. Hi, Kevin. Um, he, 
he uh so everybody in connecticut like we we didn't know a stranger everybody's our friend come on come over have a beer whatever and here is very different because i think um a lot of people here like their circle they like that's my cousin julia oh hi julia <laughs> thank you for telling us it's world cancer day we should know that all right thank you julia go on go on <laughs> But, um, and so mm. I'm here in, in Alabama with my husband and I have six children. I hope everybody was sitting down for that. I know six children. And see, I didn't mean to upstage you right there, but I couldn't help it. Thank you, Lynn. She's talking about my lashes. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, oh she's talking about yours? My bad. I think, I think she's that's your friend, right? I don't know. Oh, Lynn. okay. I, know Lynn, but I oh, love her now. You have six kids. Do. Six real living, breathing children. Real, well, and one of them is not a child in, anymore. He's going to be 20 this year, and I'm in denial about that. So Look at Kevin. Those <laughs> lashes. Oh, my God. Yes, girl. Oh, okay, Kevin. Yes, baby. Okay. Uh, yes. Look, they just all on your face. Her face is beat. I told her that this morning. I said, like, good Lord, what time do you get up? Two in the morning? Because you're looking anyway. great. I, that's what made me go throw this weave on. I was like, oh, no, mm -mm, I ain't having that. So I am so excited. But before we get started uh, talking about other things, we got something for you. In the background. Here comes. Wait for it. That's my favorite part. Ah, I, oh, I guess we're doing it again. All right, times two. That's right. Your birthday counts for once a year. That was, I cut that out of a Mylar balloon that I bought for my husband for his birthday. I just fell in love. I was like, I got to keep Best investment that. ever. <laughs> right. And they can't like shut you down on FaceTime because there's no copyright on it. So, mm. Hey, like us now. So, Jessica, any big plans for your birthday today? I know those six um, kids got some surprises up their sleeves. I'm sure they do. I know my husband is taking me out to dinner later. He told me that last night. It surprised me with that. So I'm really mm. excited about that because I don't I don't go out much. I'm a homebody, to be honest. And um, and I'm also I'm this is what I'm really excited about. I'm doing my first TikTok live today. Oh, Lord. I'm so scared. I could know. Mm. Really? You have That's to be crazy. ultra flexible to do anything on TikTok. Yes. But let me tell you, though, I, I've only been on there. I've only been on there really a couple of weeks and you have to have a thousand followers to go live. So I had like 45 followers and I was like, OK, tell me I can't do this. My kids were like, you can't do that. I said, watch me watch me. And I had a thousand uh, one thousand one hundred and twenty followers in three days. Wow. Congratulations. Congratulations. How'd you do it? Um, just making friends, you know, everybody on there. It's a really interesting platform because everybody on there is so just going through things and going through things together and mm -hmm. loving each other. And th I see more support there than I've ever seen on any platform. I'll be honest with really? you. Really? So it's not just a bunch of kids doing um, bump and grind no. dances, because that's what I thought it was. No, the over 30, over 40 crowd is huge there. We took it over. <laughs> really? Okay. Because, you know, back when it started, I had a high school hire me to, not high school, junior high, middle school, called me to come out and speak because they had kids who were um, severely depressed and one suicide attempt because her best friend got like six million uh, views on one dance and she only got like 200 and some thousand yeah. and she went, yeah, started cutting herself up. And they said at first they thought it was going to be really toxic. So I'm glad to hear that it's turn around. I'm sorry, y'all. I got to put some cream on because, um, <laughs> you, this girl, her face is so beat. I'm like, dang, I'm ashy. <laughs> No, it's, it's one of those things though, with, with social media, you know, especially if we're talking about parenting here, you see mean people no matter what platform you're on. And True. a lot of them are adults. And then we see where those mean kids come from because we see what the adults are doing on there. And but you just you have to be intentional about surrounding yourself with the right people. And, and you know, the other yeah. people is right. That's right. You know, you're absolutely right. And so, and of course, that must be coming from your intuitive mentor um, uh, stockpile. Let's talk about, let's first, let's, let's talk about the Breakthrough Show. Tell us about that. 
Okay, so so a few years ago, um, I it, we'll probably talk about this after, but I wrote about um, uh, the story of when my brother passed away 11 years ago, um, January 28th, 2010. He was 24 years old and um, oh. had cancer, and it was and my grandfather died the same week, like three days before, and the so, same week. Yeah, we were up there for my grandfather's funeral and my brother died two hours after my grandfather's funeral. So that whole moment, that whole week changed the way that I looked at my life. It was literally slapped me in the face and said, what are you doing? What are you doing? What masks are you wearing? How are you living your life? And, um, I told about that story in a book called shine, which was a collection of stories for women um, who kind of changed their life through different means. And when I did that, I had so much incredible feedback and really learned about the power of storytelling and how mm. important it is to share our stories because it does a lot of different things. It heals ourselves. It, it helps us to heal. Yeah. It gives space for other people to tell stories and helps other people heal as well who may have read the story and have gone through the same thing as you did. So I, I was looking, 2018, I was looking to have some fun and I thought, I need, I need to tell stories and I want to, I want to keep doing this and I want to create the space for other people. And I said, I want to do something like The View, but less drama. <laughs> and so, mm. um, I thought it would, drama? I don't know. <laughs> I just need a little bit less of it. I needed a little bit. Well, less of it six because. kids, I can get that. <laughs> right. And so, um, so I started it with a friend. We thought we'd have some cool people on to talk about personal development and mm. the, the breakthroughs that they had been through in their lives. Okay. And I didn't expect anything to come of it. I thought it would just be something we did for a few months. Might be fun. My mom might watch. She might not. <laughs> it's one of those things. And um, I had so much incredible feedback that I could not imagine not doing it. And um, and my partner and I at the time parted ways. She she wasn't wanting to go forward. And I said, well, here we Bye, go. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> to the left, to the left. I'll holla. Kind of like that. Mm -hmm. I, uh -huh. <laughs> so let me ask you something. So let's say uh, we pull up in the driveway of the Breakthrough Show, get out, looking good, come in, sit down. What should we expect when we're inside, ready to be entertained? Oh, you're going you're gonna to laugh and you're going to cry. And oh. I, there's, I've cried, I don't know how many episodes. It's a joke now because I'm such an emotional person. Girl. Um, but we, we talk about inspiring stories. And not I cried just Monday. <laughs> I did. I cried <laughs> Monday when Charlene Jones was here. Didn't I, y'all? No, go ahead. Don't, I, I don't care. I ain't ashamed uh, of crying. I don't, I'm not either anymore, you know, because it's good to express yourself. But um, I, you know, it's inspiring stories and it's not just these big, huge breakthroughs. Like we think of like, mm. Oh, I got in a car accident and then I couldn't walk or trauma based. It's not not all just trauma -based. right. It's little things. And then last season I started bringing on entertainers. Why did I do that? What does entertainment have to do with breakthroughs? Because when I think about the breakthrough moments that I've had in my life, a song will pop into my head mm -hmm. or a movie. I saw or something that helped me through that time. And I thought I want to get these inspirational entertainers on here too, because not only are they similar, we all want the same things ultimately as humans, mm -hmm. but they can inspire us when we're down. And Kevin Kylie that keeps commenting in the comments is he's been on the show twice. He's going to be on the premiere tomorrow. And I, he's amazing. Amazing. How many fan. times have I been on there? Not yet, but you got exactly. Bye bye. Now, I think she's going to change her mind about that. Oh, I'm sorry. I accidentally hit the button. I just met you, Lauren. I, I, <laughs> I'm kidding. I know we've already discussed it. I'm jealous. How nice for you, Kevin. I'm just kidding. Um, it is a wonderful show. I've watched a couple episodes preparing for today, and I encourage all of you to get over, and we'll get that up on. It's in the comments, right? Did you put anything in the yeah, comments I, on how I to get did. there? I put my website, but I will put the Breakthrough Show one, too. It's just the Perfect. Perfect. So, okay, the Breakthrough Show, and I love, love, love the name of it. So let's get into um, some of your passions. 
since you're right. multi-passion, um, um, what do you call it? Multi-passionate entrepreneur. Yeah. Love that because a lot of people uh, have a hard time sacredly possessing even one passion. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? Because your passion is like, for me, right after I know that I have taken a breath, mm -hmm. right standing, the thing, oh Lord. Now that time I, Man. that really was an accident. Really? I know I went like this and the space bar did it. I don't know. I'm back up. I'm back up. Okay. So now, Sue, now y'all made me sit up here and have a senior moment. What was I saying? We're talking about, we're talking about the, the breakthrough. What breakthrough? <laughs> oh, this is a biggie. I got to write this one in my, my senior moment, uh, log. <laughs> so, right. Uh, listen, I fold those things up and put in my pocket in case I just start wandering off from the house. Did you find me? If you find me, take me back to, right. No, 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 no. Um, Lord Jesus, y'all go say something, do something. Um, hi, <laughs> you know what, you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Toodles from, um, from the Peter Pan movie from Hook when he couldn't find his marbles. Oh yes. Oh, I remember that movie. I loved it. Okay. Let's, you know what? Let's talk your passions. Passion. Oh, we were saying how sacred to carry it because you, you know, oh, that's what I was saying. I hit it. I was going like this because when I wake up after I'm like, okay, I took a breath. I'm alive. Right there standing in front of me is my passion or passions mm -hmm. right there. Good morning. Because I believe everything we do every, before we walk through any door, we should stop, go like this, wave towards wherever, whatever that opportunity is and say to our passions and our truths and our stories after you. Not after I put on everything and this and the other. Our our passion should be first, the very first thing, because they are our truths. So give us a couple ideas of what give us tell us what some of your multi passion passions are. Well, I love to make people laugh. That's like that's <laughs> that if okay. I if I have not started the day making somebody laugh, then it's not. And, and I think that might be why I'm enjoying TikTok so much because there's so many funny ones on there. But um, that, and and I love to sing. I've I sang my whole life. You didn't you know sang? that, Lauren. I do. No, I didn't. I do. And you were talking about the day that I met you, the day that we talked for the hmm. first time on Zoom, yeah. and you were talking about going to the studio. I'm like, he should pick me up. You're missing a, you're missing a sit background singer. I couldn't sing. I didn't you. know. That was actually a voiceover. We were down there recording Ghetto Alexa. She she started on, she came out, she debuted on the show on the uh, the first day of February, our first show. And she'll be back the first day of every month. So if you want to yeah. catch her. Yeah, but we should do that. So tell us about your singing. I mean, have you ever done it profession? What do you, how? Uh, when, I, when I was younger, I had a band and I did a couple little, little, little tiny, like little coffee shop type things. Okay. And, I, and, and a little, um. You know, little places like that. But I got away from that for a long time. I, mm. I I was in a mindset, I think, where I thought I felt like this is only for certain people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like I, you have to be at a certain level or have a certain type of voice or a certain kind of body or whatever to pursue that. And um, and I and I ran I ran away from it as fast as I could. And then mm. uh, a couple of years ago, I was like, I, I should. I should sing a little bit. And I started playing guitar a little bit again. And I'm rusty. I'm rusty okay. <laughs> um, yeah. on that. But uh, but I'm working on it. I'm working on getting that back and doing a little bit. Of, I sing on a on a karaoke site called Sing Snap. Have you ever heard of that? Uh -uh. Yes. Girl, it, it pays is. to have six kids because you, you're all kind of techie. <laughs> I was like, what? What's that? You know, I look, I still thought they had what was that um site that like was before Facebook? Um um MySpace. Yeah. I didn't know they didn't have that anymore till like a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> right. So anyway, so you sing on there. Yeah. Um well, I, I bet go ahead. I love to sing and um and I play piano and guitar and you know, um I my daughter's learning how to play uh ukulele and she plays piano and my other son plays guitar so we got we're gonna have a little partridge family thing going on. there you go okay know. shirley uh-huh shirley jones is she still alive no i don't know either somebody google that one of y'all out there watch it is shirley jones still with us um i used to love the partridge family while you're playing mm -hmm. who was your favorite character on there 
Oh gosh. I don't, I mean, I, I resonate with mom now because, you know, but then back mom. when, you know, it was like, <laughs> come I, on I world. Know. There's a song that we're singing. Okay. Happy. Uh Oh, did you see how we yes. did that? We just threw that in there. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be playing down at the blue cafe next week. Now my favorite character was a toss up mm -hmm. between Danny Okay. And no, I know what y'all thinking. No, I did not have Keith Partridge on my wall as a poster. No, I didn't. I didn't. I had um that guy that played the manager. Remember him? <laughs> the guy that played the manager. He was the only again. other adult besides Shirley. Then there was all the kids. But you know who I couldn't understand was in that show? Mm -hmm. Tracy. The little girl, she barely played the tambourine. And then her lip sync was so bad. That role should prove that anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. Anybody. Can there and just bang away for me. She must have been some director's uh, granddaughter or something. That's how she got in. But anyway, no, nothing bad about you, Tracy. Guy, is, she, is somebody check? Is Tracy still alive? I'm kidding. You know why I said, I'm saying this thing about us people still alive? I'm going to tell you why. And then we're going to go into... Um, we're going to go to break and come back and hit all these other great points uh, as we continue this birthday party number four. Oh, for our girl, Jessica Dugas. But um, anyway, I'm not even going to go there. We're just going to go to uh, uh, we're just going to go to break and come back when we return. Have your questions and comments ready. We're going to hit some of those and let Jessica answer those for you. And we want, I really want you to tell us about these healing modalities. I yeah. think, and I'm hoping they're not just physical. I hope there is some, some personal development, some spiritual, because you know, there's a lot of pain right now, a lot of pain. And uh, we want to help alleviate that. And as you, I know you're an empath, you're an intuitive mentor. And also if you could talk about it, whatever you know about this, I don't care how much it is, a grain, an entire sand, uh, beach full, but I want to talk about if you have some insight on how we don't carry, if we're an empath or a person who just cares, how we don't carry what we absorb from others around us. I'm just yeah. learning about that. And I'm I'm really thinking I can do better and I'm hoping you can help me. So when we come back, we're gonna get into it down deep and dirty on this birthday party with our special guest today, Jessica Dugas. Don't you dare go away.
Okay, we're back. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to my sponsor for the uh, show today, Intention Pins at intentionpin.com. I have mine and I love it. This is called a Hollywood and it's everything in here is not just wood and this and the other. Every, go to the website, uh, intentionpin.com. They tell you everything that's happened with every every element that is used in making these pens. And then they actually sit there before they ship it to you and put energy into it. It's just really wonderful. I will be signing my late night television contract at NBC with this pen. Mm. <laughs> Laugh if you want to. I bet you I'd do it. So anyway, Jessica's here, the birthday girl herself. Oh, and also, you saw also in that break right there, a brand new show to the E360 Network. To watch it simply, or Jessica's show, my show, anything you want, you can find pretty much at E360.com. Download the app on your mobile device today and get over and watch shows like the one I just premiered uh, on here that started just yesterday, uh, Taboo Talks. They're, they're cutting it up over there, talking about things that people are afraid to talk about, but are still thinking. So get over. Jessica, birthday girl, uh, welcome back. And before we went to break, we were talking about a bunch of stuff, but I wanted to get into this healing modalities yes. thing. Tell us yes. about that. Well, you know, I, I mentioned about when my brother passed away and with him and even going back before that, I've had a, a lot of chronic health issues and um, throughout my life and I've, I've it's always been surrounded by like you just do what the doctors tell you and you and you move on like do what the doctors tell you move mm -hmm. on don't question anything don't nothing doesn't matter how you feel you just do what they tell you and you move on and then when my brother was sick <clears throat> i watched him literally do everything they told him to do and within six months he was gone mm -hmm. and um and so, it, and it's not, I want to be very clear. I'm always very, very clear when I'm on anybody's shows, including my own, that I'm not knocking the medical community at all. But for right. me, I, I needed to see, I needed something else. I, I knew that there was something else going on because you see people who, um, you know, do everything that they're told to do medically mm -hmm. and sure. but mentally, emotionally, spiritually, they get so low. And I really felt like that was such a, that's been such a huge um, realization in my life. So mm -hmm. uh, I became really interested after he passed away in holistic um, practices. I, um, I think three and a half years ago, we became plant-based. My daughter was really sick. And within four months, she was fine. Like it was unbelievable transformation with her. Um, so plant-based diet we do. And then also um, I got into the intuitive, listening to my intuition. What mm -hmm. is, you know, if, if a doctor says something or if a friend says something like, uh, do we need to go with that hundred percent or should we check in with ourselves? And so the intuition is really big. Um, in 2017, I became a certified Reiki master and teacher. Ooh, so um, that became really big for me. If for anybody that doesn't know what that is, it's um, a healing technique that basically it's channeling. If you think about like a lot of people know about Tai Chi. Yeah. The chi energy. Um, it's channeling that through yourself and uh, and creating a space where people can heal themselves of a lot of mm. different things and balance the body, the energy field and all of that. Um, I got into playing with crystals, which I, you know, I also like to collect them. I'm sorry to my husband. <laughs> I have so many at this point. Um, so looking at crystals and affirmations are a big, big one, but you gotta, you gotta do them right. I think a lot of people, um, think they're going to say, um, I am, I am healthy and well in the mirror one time, and then they're going to be better the next day. That's not mm -hmm. how that works. That's not how that works. Uh -huh. Oh <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So you just don't sit there and repeat, uh, things. What? So what's missing? Uh, from that for most people. Uh, so, so with the affirmations, you have to believe what you're saying. So if you, if you're sick, so say you're, you know, you got a fever, you're throwing up, you're all of this stuff. And you're looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I am healthy. Do you believe that? Do, mm. do you, you know, so you have to, you have to say something you believe. So adding words in like, I am on the road to healing. I am in the process of becoming healthy and well. I mm. am, you know, the process. Yes. So you can't just jump over to the end result. 
you know, like it's like you're not drink. It doesn't give you I dream of genie powers, no. and they're there. No, you got to still book a plane and time. still go. You still got to no. go through the spiritual TSAs, right, to get yeah. there. You got to do the work. Yeah. See, and let me ask you about that because that's the thing with with, with affirmations. I kind of try to stay away from it unless it's someone that I'm working with, mm -hmm. uh, because everybody's got their own uh, mindset when it comes to this sort of thing. But do you think a lot of people misuse? Uh, or, or I don't know if that's the right word, but anyway, you know what I'm saying? Uh, that they think that just by saying it, that gets them out of the work that accompanies something mm -mm. because, you no. know, a lot of people though, I said this every day, I claimed it and it didn't happen, but I have a theory on that too. Keep going. It's it's the same thing. Look, I'm going to, I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings here. Uh -oh. I'm sorry. Well, hurt it, girl. It's, 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 hurt same... <laughs> it's the same thing with prayer. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so you can, you can pray all day long. This is my favorite saying. You could pray Get all it. day long, but God gives you hands and feet for a reason. I, sat, listen, I had, I, I was working at a church for, for a long time and um, they were, they were having issues with one of their departments and, you know, and I came came to them with all these ideas, and their response was, "We're going to pray about it. Not we're going to try oh, yeah. it. Not we're going to implement it. Not we're going to look deeper into this. It was we're just going to pray about it." And you know what? They never they never fixed it. <laughs> mm, so yeah, like, that's oh, a whole nother show there. But you, I feel you. You. Have to check yourself. you have to check yourself and say, mm. "Do you really want this? Do you really want this?" It's like if you're if you're going to go on a diet, you're mm. not going to. You're not going to look in the mirror and say, I am a healthy weight and sit there and eat Doritos and watch Netflix all day. Well, I'm going to tell you, I have a theory for that, too. Seriously. <laughs> well, there's the difference is and you guys that are followers know that I say this all the time. If you really want something, then don't say I want you can't just say I want to lose 30 pounds. That's a wish. When you say I need to lose 30 pounds and you put make need the primary force behind something that comes with the plan. If I say I need to lose 30 pounds and I say, OK, how am I do that? Well, I mean, I need to shop better because I need to cook better. I need to meal prep in order to lose the weight I want. You know, and so I think that has a lot to it, too. Uh, what we say, what comes out of our mouth right back to the um, the thing with uh, uh, affirmations, yeah. you know, with every word that proceedeth out of our mouth it's true it's mm -hmm. really true you do we can speak things into existence right. so um what about um okay how many books have you written so i've been a part of three different compilations and okay. then um so i have i was in radical self-love you'll see this with my friend okay. Lori, Lori and and then um, Soul Hearted Living by my friend, Dr. De Deborah Rebo. I have some quotes in there along with quotes from Oprah. I feel so good to have quotes next to Oprah. Let me tell you. Girl, Oprah ought to feel good to have quotes next to you. <laughs> and then this was the one that I was talking about. This is Shine. And this is the one that I mm. tell the story of my brother's passing and what, what I learned from that and what I, how I started changing my life. And then I'm working on my first solo book, which is going to be mm. a collection of short stories about growing up with my grandparents and things that they taught me without teaching me. So things that we hear and see as kids that affect us later on. Maybe they didn't say, hey, this is what you need to do, but they showed it in different ways. And so that's what that book's going to be. You got a title for that yet? I don't. I'm trying okay. to, I, I'm trying to. It'll come. My cousin that's in the comments there, Julia, she knows how important our grandparents were to us. And, um, and it's one of those things where it's such an honoring experience for me. Yes. Well. I want to honor them. So I want to, I want to do it right. I want to do it right. Oh, thank you uh, for that. I'm serious because a lot of people throw anything out there. Just to say, I've, I've written a book, you know what I'm saying? And that's why they got boxes and boxes yeah. of them in their basement or in yeah. the guest room. Um, because, you know, if, if you're if you're doing it for the if you're doing it to be of service, then you shouldn't have any of your books. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you walk down the street and just hand them out to people. So anyway, I'm glad to hear you say that. I saw in the comments I'm looking for it, somebody put in there. I'm trying to find it where it's about Shirley. Shirley Jones. Somebody said, oh, Shirley she did. dead, child. <laughs> or Shirley. There it is. There. Lynn Jordan, Shirley did, child. Okay, thank you, Lynn. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. Honey, did you know that Shirley Jones was dead? You didn't know it either? Yep. 
No, oh, my husband, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what what kind of advice do you have? Um, uh, let's go down the list of all of your authority pieces, starting with mom of six at 40. Um, any advice for people that are a lot of people are having to homeschool now, and it's like, you know, I love you, but I brought you in this world. Say one more word, I'm gonna take you out. So, how's that going for you? Homeschooling Listen, six kids. We have been homeschooling since 2013, since before it was the thing to do or the thing you it's had to better. do. Um, but I'll say this. Let me say this about that. I give you all of you moms out there, you dads out there, anybody that's homeschooling their kids right now and didn't ask for this, you, you're living a very different life than I am, which is someone who intentionally said, this is what I'm going to do mm. seven years ago. Um, because we have a very different, we're not like, I'm the principal, I'm the superintendent, the I'm lunch the lady. I make the decisions. I <laughs> yeah. make the decisions about what they learn and everything else. You all that are doing it at home, you know, you're having to still follow the school's curriculum and do the Zoom thing. And all. we don't do that here. And so I just want to give all of you guys some love and credit because it's not easy. It's so much easier. I think I feel like in the shoes I'm in where I'm the one calling, making the decisions, if that mm. makes sense. It does make sense. And hats off to all of you parents out there who are doing things that you never considered yourself um, the right person to be doing. But, you know, we have to we have to go where the world takes us. Um, and so thank you for that. We got uh, Lynn. Lynn actually sang with David Cassidy a year before he died in New York City. She had Keith on her wall. Wow. So it's how interesting we were talking about the you know in here we had somebody that actually sang with one of the partridges so what what, what do you feel i'm going to ask you something a little deep here and then we're going to play a game what do you feel uh you've learned most through the opportunity door known as covid-19 oh my gosh um i think i think preparation is key. Mental preparation is key. Mm -hmm. um, our lives have not changed a whole lot. Um, my husband has worked throughout the entire pandemic. He works at a car dealership. In fact, mm -hmm. he promoted and went to another dealership. We moved, we bought a house. We, I mean, life has not stopped for us. Um, okay. And then, you know, you have to, I, I think that surrounding myself with such positive, good people, um, you know, waking up every day, uh, you know, it's, it's just another day. You know, I, I think if I had not done all of this personal development work, I'd be down the rabbit hole right now. Like See? a lot of people are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so rabbit hole real quickly mm -hmm. though. Um, <laughs> no, not at Fox was, that was a question. Here's the one. Another David Cassidy story from another person. Cousin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she said David Cassidy tried to pick her up at a casino in Connecticut. Yep. yep. Mm. And you turned him down, apparently, huh? Yeah, mm. she did. <laughs> huh? Oh, oh. That's my cousin. That's she my said, cousin. was a bit creepy. Okay. How you doing, little girl? Remember me? Right. So how about that? Was that creepy enough? Okay. So, so. Another thing about ground, let's talk about grounding because you have all of these rudiments, Reiki and all the things that you've picked up. Help us out here. Um, bad throat moments is actually what came about when I spoke to God and said I needed something to help ground me in the mornings to start the trajectory of my purpose uh, on the right track. Because I was kind of guy, I wake up with good intentions, but let me stub my pinky toe. If I and that's exactly what happened that morning. I stubbed my ticket to pinky toe, and I if there anybody was around, you know how that hurt. Grab it on the end of the bed, you know what I'm saying? Boom! Ow! It feels like it broke. And I really took a look at that because I cussed and limped around for about an hour, and I didn't want to do anything but just sit on my ass that day. And I said, mm -hmm. "This ain't right." If a pinky toe can make that happen, what am I gonna do? What am I kind of what kind of situation am I gonna be in if something? bigger than that happens. I need to fix this. So what do you got for us uh, about people that need a way to get grounded as early as possible in their day? Or does it have to happen in the morning? I don't think it has. I think it's a moment to moment choice. Ooh. To be honest. I mean, the morning, I mean, anything can happen in the morning. I mean, <laughs> I get up and sometimes I have a child like right here and it's one of those real creepy. Mommy. Moments. Right. Yes. 
And it's like, are are you awake? Are you dead? Are you alive? Are you sleeping? What is happening here? And so you've um, opened up your eyes and there was a face just staring at you. That's funny. I re- listen, I remember one time it was like two in the morning and my daughter must have gotten up in the middle of the night and she has like really long straight hair. And all I see is the silhouette of her just standing there in the doorway. I'm like cousin you, it. I'm gonna tell you what, like that. What's that movie, The Grudge? I like, never saw that. like this. Oh my God. Listen, I'm just trying to say my kids are trying to kill me. <laughs> I bet every parent in America, probably in the world has said that at one point or another. Yeah. Um, that that's really, really, uh, yeah. I, I, you make me jealous when you talk about all these kid moments. Cause we only have two cats, no kids, but you know, you, that's how it is. I mean, listen, they'll creep you out whenever you want. <laughs> Right. So you, how long have you figured out what year you will be an empty nester? Oh God, no, I have. My youngest is four. So I got a minute. You sure do. I got a minute. So my, my kids are four, six, let's see, four, six, 11, 13, 15, and 19 right now. Wow. Girl. And see, it has, yeah, I had to kind of look around for a minute. Like I'm picturing them in my head, like counting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's a lot of birthdays. That's a lot of friends list and activities and things to keep in, you know. Do you know America's Supermom, Lachelle Atkins? She's got 15 of them. Um, I don't think I've seen that one. I oh, you haven't? I got to introduce I you to you. her. My husband's leaving. Bye. Oh, you do that too. See, I do it too. I I, I don't care if we're on here. It's like, like I'm sorry, we're live. I love you though. <laughs> okay. Mm, have a great one. Listen, are you ready to play a little game? Help somebody yes. get in the hopper. We just played it yesterday, so it's a little early. But it's your birthday. You can do anything you want today. And um, matter of fact. Ah, I love that ending. Who does? It's doing it. We're going to spin. You ready? Yes. Blue. I know what that game is. Blue is, here we go. You get to play. What's in the box? Oh, my gosh. I know. Are you ready? I'm going to give you a just. box, is it? Huh? It's not like a jack in a box. Not going to scare me, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's the box. Okay. So you're going to, I'm going to give you a little description. If you get stuck, the audience may help you. Um, okay. So this comes, your clue comes in the form of a riddle. Uh, tall, I am young. Short, I am old. While with light, I do glow. What's in the box? Oh my gosh. Tall, I am young. Short, mm-hmm. I am old. While with light, I do glow. With light. What's in the box? I'll give you a hint. Happy birthday to you. Is it a birthday candle? Candle. And I actually did get a birthday candle. I was going to light it, but I don't want to catch myself on fire. You know how this weave is. One little wrong move, you're gone. (laughs) Ask Michael Jackson if you could. Remember that with the Pepsi thing? No. And not, uh uh-uh. No, ma'am. No, thank you. Thank you for playing. Oh, now, do you see the names of the, the guests sometimes? The guests? I do. Okay, I do. pick a name, and I'm going to put them in the hopper. Here's our high-tech digital accounting system, which is uh, the office of Ernst & Ernst will certify at the end of the month uh, that all is kosher. So today is the fourth. Who are you going who you, who, who you to call? All right, I'm going to close my eyes and scroll. All right, one, two, three. All right, who's, who's this? Who's this? Virginia Hodges. Oh, Virginia Hodges is a, uh, uh, um, she was on my show during, uh, what do you call it? What do you call those people? Celebrity week, oh. uh, in December. Yeah. She's a, she's like a photographer for the stars. She's absolutely fabulous. Oh. And what a lovely woman. Yeah. Virginia Hodges. Congratulations. You are now inside the hopper to win a prize bundle mm-hmm. on the last show of the month, but you must be present to win. So mark your calendars now. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, let's let you take it from here and I'm just going to sit back and let you put it out, put out there what it is 
that why you get up and do this every day when you uh, God knows you have your hands already full, but you still do all these things. And I love that everything you do looks like you have a hundred people working with you to do it. And that's not the case. So that means you put a lot of time and a lot of people, um, a lot that I work with, actually, they have families and stuff. They don't know how to not get lost in the cushions of their lives. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to not end up in the proverbial drunk drawer uh, because they give, give, give and never keep a piece of pie put away from themselves. And then they wonder why they end up with crumbs. Talk about that. And let's take somebody out of that and help them get to a place where they can live joy, joy, joyous and freely. Mm -hmm. What is that? Joy, joyful, happy and free. There it is. Tell us about so, it. Okay. I want you guys to picture this for just a minute. Um, when I was eight years old, I, I don't know where this came from. I don't know why I used to do it, but I used to love to play um, and put on these little seminars in my living room. Mm. Um, I want you to picture this Tiffany blue carpet in my grandmother's house with the you know the living room that you only went in if it was christmas okay and um and she used to god bless my grandmother she used to let me you know do this and she would entertain me and i would color these pamphlets for this seminar that i was doing how um, old were you eight wow um i used to color these little pamphlets and then and then picture my boom box in the background with some Taylor Dane, love will lead you back. Okay. I'm not going to burst into it. I was tempted. You said I was taking the in-breath. <laughs> love. Okay. Stop. And, Go ahead. and I did this little seminar for, for just my grandmother called How to Love Yourself. Oh. And I don't, I, I look back at that and I think, I don't know where that came from. I have I have no recollection recollection of seeing something like that on TV or any like I have no clue where that came from and I used to get up there and you know read I would read a little Bible verse. Okay. <laughs> I would I would I would sing with Taylor and you know have her come in and it was this whole thing, and somewhere between that little eight year old girl and um, you know as I got older, I, I lost her. I don't know where, I don't know where mm. she went. And, um, and then because I felt like, you know, I had made so many poor decisions in my life and things were not going the way that I want that then I, then I started to have kids. And because when you have children, mm. you can, then you, your excuses, you, you have to focus on them. You can't focus on yourself anymore You mm. have to focus on them. And so um, I think that, at some point, and then when my brother passed away, I thought, where yeah. did she go? Mm. Where did she go? What happened? And um, and I've had a few of those moments recently, too. Mm -hmm. you know, Amen. Knocking, on, knocking on 40's door of going, okay, okay. <laughs> knock, knock, knocking on 40's door. <laughs> Yes. Um, and so, and, and a couple years ago, I got really sick again. And, um, and at some point during then I said, I just want to wake up and I just want to live joy and experience joy, whatever that means. And all the coaches are like, you got to pick a niche. You got to pick one thing to do. You sure. got to pick one thing. And I just say, screw that. I'm going to uh, wake up in the morning. Okay and do what brings me joy. And, um, and sometimes that's hard. Sometimes you have people looking in going, what are you doing? Like, you don't make any sense. You don't, right. don't care anymore. <laughs> well, don't you take anything seriously? You know, I, I get it too. But you know what? I'm never going to be, uh, I'm, I'm going to be completely um, unapologetic mm -hmm. about being happy. Yeah. I don't care. Because I, 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 I relinquished that right, which is a birthright for decades, listening to the abusers that, you know, weren't even in my world except as a, as a apparition. You know what I'm saying? Something that I had invited along to sit in the back seat of my vehicle all these decades. No, I'm going to find joy. Count it all joy. I don't have mistakes in my life anymore, Jessica. 
Everything that happens, I don't care what it feels like at the time. Doesn't mean I don't hurt, don't cry, don't. I'm not fearful of things for a split second. But you know what I know at 58 years old that every place in my journey where there was a tear or a trauma or anything that didn't make me feel right about whatever, including myself, was also not just that. It was an entry point where one of my future blessings was born into the process of becoming in that very moment. Yeah. I wouldn't trade one day of anything I have ever lived. I would live it all a thousand times again for five minutes of the world I live in today. And I want, you know, at 40 years old, how do you feel about that? Is that how you feel? Because you look marvelous and you look happy. I feel like, I feel like this is going to be the ultimate comeback story. Uh oh. Oh, wow. You know what? I believe you're right because yesterday, our guest it was here and did I get rid of it? No, his his tagline. Look, the comeback coach. Comeback is a theme. That's right. And the thing is, you know, it's true because those things that that was the, in, in that little girl in the living room with your grandmother, those things never left you. We left them. And wherever we left them, when we find the courage to walk back and remember ourselves to that moment, we'll find whatever it was waiting right there for us and including everybody those trauma places we talked about when you find the courage like jessica was talking about and you go back you're going to find all those wonderful parting gifts that carol merrill had for you but you were so busy to uh, you know run out of the room because of trauma or pain you forgot to take those but life knows that we're creatures of habit and it expected us to come back and pick those things up because they are a part of our birthright. Jessica, I want to thank you so much for sharing your birthday with us. Um, you you wear 40 well, and I can't wait to see what the rest of the year and beyond uh, have for you and what you have for us. You're welcome back anytime. Just thank let you. us know when you'd like to come in. And, you know, if you ever need, you know, if you're ever out slumming for guests, <laughs> you know where I'm at. I'm just kidding. Come on, man. I would love you, it because. You come on, will you come on and sing for us? Will you sing for us? I don't know. I'm kind of shy. Oklahoma, when the winds come sweeping down the plain. I don't care. Is that a yes or is that, that a yes? yes? Come on. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Okay. Y'all heard it. I'm coming over. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. It was a fun. We were a little bit goofy today, but sometimes you just got to be, right? Get out there and be the blessing you want to see in the world. And uh, Jessica, where do they go to continue the dialogue with you? jessicadugas.com or thebreakthroughshow.com and it has all the links to my social doesn't get easier than that you guys thank you so much i love you i'm a better person because of you i'll see you tomorrow morning on the front porch of bathrobe moments god willing where our guest will be joseph frederico don't miss it we start at eight o'clock sharp wouldn't be the same without you have a blessed day bye everybody happy birthday Stop.